Hi, today I'm going to explain an American dystopian action film called Chaos Walking. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie is set on a planet far, far away from Earth called the New World, a planet where the sun never sets. It is the year 2258 AD. Searching for a better life, some humans left Earth and colonized a part of the planet. Humans have found everything they had back on Earth and more in the New World. When humans first entered the new planet, they realized that all men have been afflicted with a condition called the noise. This condition causes everyone to see and hear a man's thoughts. Although this condition lays bare one's secret thoughts and hence can be a disadvantage, especially for teenage boys, one can do other cool things like creating 3D holograms using their noise, which others can see with their naked eyes. The human colonists were involved in a bitter civil war with the native humanoid species referred to as the Spackle. In the war, the Spackle ostensibly killed all the female human colonists, while half the men survived. Since then, the first wave of human colonists lost contact with the Earth and the outside world. Todd Hewitt is a young man who lives in the human colony called Prentice Town. Todd lost his mother and father at a young age in the war and lives with his adoptive fathers, Ben Moore and Killian Boyd. Unlike his fathers, Todd has never seen a woman. He spends most of his time helping his fathers in the field. One day, he aspires to be a man like the colony's mayor, David Prentice. Unlike other men, Prentice has mastered the art of controlling his noise, making his thoughts difficult to see and hear. Other prominent residents of the town include the eccentric preacher, Aaron, and David Prentice's son, Davy. Todd doesn't see eye to eye with Davy as both always compete to win the mayor's approval. One day, the second wave of human colonists arrive on board a mothership. They send a small scout ship carrying three human crew members to investigate the planet and make contact with the first wave of human colonists. Unfortunately, upon entering New World's atmosphere, the scout ship catches fire and crashes deep in the woods near Prentice Town. While helping his dad, Todd spots someone stealing food from his barn. He chases the thief into the woods with his dog, Manchi. He eventually loses the thief but comes across the crash site. He speculates that the survivor must have been the thief. He immediately rushes to inform the mayor about the spaceship. On his way, he tries to keep quiet, but the other men hear and see his thoughts about the crashed ship, and they all head to investigate the crash scene and scavenge some parts of the ship. After learning that the survivor didn't have any noise, Mayor Prentice concludes that it must be a girl and orders his men to look for her. While Todd is alone, the girl reveals herself. Todd is scared, shocked, and enchanted to see a girl, as he has never seen one before. But unable to control his noise, Todd unintentionally alerts the town dwellers to her whereabouts. The girl runs deeper into the woods, but Prentice surrounds her with a 3D hologram cage and captures her. Prentice takes her to his home and expresses his condolences to her over the loss of the other two crew members. The girl learns about the noise and the war with the Spackle, which resulted in the massacre of all women of Prentice Town. Prentice asks her about her mission, and she tells him that she came here on a scout ship sent by the mothership to make contact with the first wave colonies. The mothership is the largest ship in the second colonist's fleet and holds 4,000 people. It will soon come to rescue her. The girl starts getting suspicious of Prentice's intention when he keeps pressing her more about the ship, inquiring about its landing site and time. Prentice is suddenly forced to go outside to address the men, who are creating a lot of noise and burning with curiosity about the female guest. Before leaving, Davy is charged with keeping an eye on her. The spoiled brat starts going through the girl's bag and unwittingly toys with one of her gadgets, which causes it to shoot sparks, helping her disappear. While escaping, the girl overhears Prentice talking to the town's influential preacher, Aaron, from under the floorboards. Prentice says he is fed up with living in exile. He plans to seize her colony's mothership and use it to take over the rest of the planet. He says they must prevent her from contacting and warning the mothership. Meanwhile, the preacher is convinced that the girl is an angel descended from heaven to punish the man of Prentice Town for their sins. As Prentice and others venture out to look for the girl, Todd steals the girl's bag from the mayor's home, hoping to find some cool stuff. Be careful what you wish for, Todd. After returning home, Todd starts going through the bag, but to his surprise, he finds the girl hiding in his barn. Suddenly, one of Prentice's men comes looking for the girl after spotting her jacket nearby. 
Todd lets the girl hide and sends the man away. Ben and Killian learn about the girl and lock her in the barn. They tell their son he must give the girl back to Prentice to avoid attracting any trouble, but Todd refuses to comply. Todd has started liking the girl and insists on helping her. Ben and Killian eventually relent, releasing this might be the only chance Todd will get of starting his own family. Ben tells Todd to take the girl to Far Branch, another human town on the planet, which Todd never knew existed. Killian worries that people there are hostile to Prentice Town men, but Ben assures him that they won't harm Todd as long as the girl accompanies him. But before Todd could leave with the girl, Prentice and his men arrive looking for her. The girl escapes on a motorcycle while Todd chases after her on a horse. Upset at Todd for hiding the girl, Prentice kills Killian, giving Ben a chance to save his own and Todd's life. Prentice then asks him to help find Todd and the girl. Todd eventually catches up to the girl. After losing their motorcycle and horse to an accident, they both set out on foot to Far Branch, accompanied by Todd's dog. Along their journey, Todd finally gets to know a girl. He is amazed by her strength and at times finds himself struggling to keep up with her speed. She initially doesn't trust him, but Todd eventually wins her trust and hunts a snake for lunch for her. Ooh, a new world delicacy. She finally tells Todd that her name is Viola. She was born on the mothership, and her parents died during the 64-year-long journey from Earth to the New World. Viola's grandparents signed up for the journey, hoping to find better opportunities on the faraway planet. En route to Far Branch, Todd is attacked by a spackle. Todd subdues the spackle and proceeds to kill it, but Viola teaches him kindness and asks him to let it go. They arrive at Far Branch and learn that it is inhabited by men, women, and children. They are greeted by the town's mayor, Hildy. Unaware of Far Branch's dislike for Prentice Town, Viola discloses that Todd is from Prentice Town. Todd is immediately put in handcuffs, while Hildy talks to Viola in private. The town's men confront Todd, but after talking to Viola, the mayor tells them to back off. Prentice and his men continue to pursue Todd and the girl. Preacher Aaron is becoming increasingly unstable and, at times, clashes with Prentice. Mayor Hildy gives Todd and Viola shelter and food. She also tells them that Viola can make contact with her mothership from Haven, the first human settlement in the New World, which Todd didn't know about either. Viola decides to head for Haven the next morning. Seeing her so adamant about leaving, Todd starts wondering what if Viola stayed with him and kissed him instead. I'd rather be with you. Kiss me, Todd. Kiss me. Kiss of course, Viola hears his thoughts and Todd, embarrassed, apologizes. Honestly, that could have been a lot worse. After dinner, Hildy gives them separate rooms to rest, but the thought of Viola leaving doesn't let Todd sleep. He finds his mother's journal that Ben put in his bag and shows it to Viola, who also is still awake. Viola asks him what his mother has written, and Todd reveals that he doesn't know because he can't read. Prentice Town's mayor, Aaron, burned all the books when Todd was a child. He felt that being born with a noise was enough of an education. Viola offers to read it for Todd. Todd's mother's name is Carissa. Carissa writes, My dearest Todd, I begin this journal on the day of your birth. You're the most beautiful thing I have seen in New World. I wish your pa were here to see you, but the Lord saw fit to take him. You're going to be tall, strong, and handsome like your pa. The ladies of New World won't know what hit him. There's a man named David Prentice who convinced us all to find a settlement on the far side of the swamp so that the noise from the rest of the New World won't reach us. Prentice seems so full of secrets and shame, and this place doesn't allow that. He's better at making his noise disappear than any man here. It's so loud here all the time. The men can't stand women knowing everything about them, and them not knowing anything about us. Almost all the men here, they're breaking down. Prentice and Aaron are getting inside the men's heads. They've given all of us women a curfew. The men are turning on us. Aaron, our holy man, said women don't have noise because we've got no souls. I can see what's coming, clear as day. If things go wrong, keep searching for hope. Todd realizes that the women were not killed by the native aliens, but rather by Prentice and the men of Prentice Town. He feels angry and betrayed that everything he had been told was a lie. Prentice and his men arrive at Far Branch, demanding Viola. Hildy and other Far Branch town dwellers distract them, while Todd and Viola try to escape. Preacher Aaron discovers them, forcing them to hide inside a storeroom. A Far Branch woman helps them keep Aaron and other men away with a rifle. Prentice sends Ben to convince Todd to surrender Viola in exchange for sparing Todd's life. Todd confronts Ben about the journal. Ben admits that he tried but couldn't do anything to help the women. It was chaos. The best he could do was keep Todd safe. Ben apologizes to him for keeping him in the dark and tells Todd, let me protect you now. 
Prentice gives Ben and Todd an ultimatum to bring the girl out. Ben appears from the store, followed by Viola, as she proceeds towards Prentice. He tells her he is pleased to see her again. But to Prentice and other men's astonishment, Viola suddenly disappears into thin air. It was a 3D hologram noise created by Ben to distract Prentice and others, while the real Viola, Todd, and Manchi fled from the back door. However, Preacher Aaron spots them and starts chasing them. They come across a boat and escape through the river. Aaron continues to pursue them and knocks them over the boat. Todd manages to save and get away with Viola, but unfortunately, the psychopath Aaron kills Manchi, further enraging Todd. Manchi's death extremely upsets Todd, but Viola comforts him and they continue on their journey to Haven. The support towers for a monorail built by first wave colonists show them the path. On their way, Viola and Todd come across the ruins of the first colony ship. Prentice and his men begin to catch up with them. Todd suggests they keep moving, but Viola tells him that they don't have much time left and they can use the ship's emergency transmitter. They scan the ruins and eventually find the transmitter, but Viola learns that the antenna is damaged. Viola loses hope, but Todd offers to repair it. He climbs on the antenna and asks Viola to be on standby to send the signal. Todd manages to fix the antenna as Prentice and his men arrive with Ben. Prentice threatens to kill Ben should Todd not surrender, but Ben tells his son not to cave in to his demand. Meanwhile, Preacher Aaron sneaks into the ship and attacks Viola. Aaron regrets killing the women of Prentice Town. He laments not being able to tell the voice of God from the noise. He believes he is a sinner and pleads with Viola to kill him and purify him. Left with no choice, Viola immolates Aaron with one of her gadgets. As he burns, the preacher exclaims, I am baptized with fire, I'm the sinner, and passes away. Viola then sends the SOS signal to the mothership while Todd surrenders himself before Prentice. Prentice asks Todd about the girl, but this time, Todd manages to hide his noise. Angered, Prentice shoots his father, and Todd immediately rushes to Ben's side. Ben again apologizes to Todd for keeping him in the dark about his mother and slips him a knife before passing away. Todd attacks Prentice with the knife, but he is sent rolling down, losing the knife in the process. Todd runs for cover, but Prentice wounds him with the gun. Todd then sneaks up on Prentice from behind, only to realize that he is an illusion. Prentice then proceeds to shoot him, but Todd distracts him with an illusion of his mother and other women of Prentice Town, all calling him a coward. They back Prentice up on the edge of a cliff. Viola then appears and attacks him with a pipe. He dodges the strike and grabs the pipe, but loses his balance in the process. Viola then frees her grip, and Prentice falls to his death. As Viola tends to a badly wounded Todd, the colony mothership arrives, causing Davy and the remaining Prentice Town men to flee in fear. Todd later gains consciousness in the mothership's medical room, fully healed with Viola by his side. Viola reveals that she is going to live in the new world with him and takes him to meet the other colonists. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.